do you remember my video on the demon Prince Belphegor? Demon Prince Belphegor isn't talked about often amongst those of mankind. However, he is a demon who indeed exists. Demon Prince Belphegor is a demon who has also made himself known to mankind through past names he took when he was being worshipped by many. His most famous name in history is Bel Pure. If you are not familiar with this name, I will get you up to speed so you can understand what it is I'm talking about. Bel Pure, or Bel Pure, also known as Bel of Pure, is a deity mentioned in the Hebrew Bible, specifically in the book of Numbers, chapter 25, verses 1 through 9. Bel Pure is associated with a specific incident in the history of the Israelites during their wanderings in the wilderness after the exodus from Egypt. While there is limited information about Bel Pure, I can provide you with a detailed explanation based on biblical accounts and historical context. Bel Pure appears to have been a local deity in the region of Moab, which is located in modern day Jordan. The name Baal is a common term used in the ancient Near East to refer to a variety of local deities, often associated with fertility, agriculture, and other natural forces. Pure is believed to be a specific location, possibly a mountain or shrine where this deity was worshipped. Baal Pure was primarily worshipped by the Moabites, a neighboring people of the Israelites. The Moabites were a Semitic people who lived east of the Jordan River and had their religious practices and deities, including Baal Pure. This cult was specific to the Moabite culture, and there is no evidence of widespread worship of Baal Pure or Baal Pure in other ancient cultures. The exact reasons for the worship of Baal Pure are not explicitly mentioned in the Bible. However, like many other fertility deities, Baal Pure was likely worshipped to ensure agricultural prosperity, fertility, and the general well-being of the Moabite people. It is common for agricultural societies to venerate deities associated with the fertility to ensure bountiful harvest and the continuation of their communities. The story of Baal Pure in the Bible revolves around the Israelites' encounter with the Moabites. In Numbers chapter 25, the Israelites camped near the Moabite territory, and some of the Israelite men began to indulge in the practices of Baal Pure, including sexual immorality and idol worship. This act of apostasy angered God, and the plague broke out amongst the Israelites as punishment. The plague only stopped when Phinehas, a priest of Israel, zealously killed an Israelite man and a Midianite woman who were involved in Baal Pure worship. The specific offerings and practices associated with Baal Pure worship are not detailed in the biblical account. However, like many fertility cults, it likely involved offerings of food, drink, and possibly sexual rites intended to ensure the deity's favor for the fertility of the land and the people. So in summary, Baal Pure was a local deity of the Moabites, worshipped primarily for the agricultural prosperity and fertility. The incident involving the Israelites in the wilderness highlighted the dangers of syncretism and idolatry as they were enticed by Moabite practices and faced divine punishment. The worship of Baal Pure was specific to the Moabite culture and was not widely practiced in other ancient cultures. While the exact details of the cult's practices are not well documented, it likely involved offerings and rituals aimed at ensuring fertility and well-being. The connection between Baal Pure and Belphegor can be made in the context of the broader history of religious and cultural influences. Prince Belphegor, as a demon associated with various sins, including sexual immorality and materialism, shares thematic similarities with the negative aspects of Baal Pure worship, which included sexual misconduct and idolatry. In some interpretations or artistic representations, Belphegor is depicted as a tempter who lures individuals into sinful behavior similar to those associated with the worship of Baal Pure. It's essential to note that these connections are not a result of later theological and artistic elaborations, but historical or religious continuity. Bel Pure and Belphegor come from different religious and cultural contexts, and their connection is symbolic, thematic, and synonymous. This is why I told you that Satan himself, along with his demons, have real, original names. But throughout human history, they've taken on different forms and different names to further deceive mankind into worshipping them. 
So just because a god, goddess, or whatever supernatural being you may serve has a different name doesn't necessarily mean that that is a separate entity. That may well be a demonic spirit who masqueraded themselves into another form so that they may receive praise and worship from human beings. You must understand that one of their main goals is to redirect all focus, praise, and worship toward God back to them, specifically back to Satan. Romans chapter 1 verses 18 through 28, which is seen as describing Satan's plans for humanity. It suggests that humanity should inherently recognize God's existence through the creation of the world. However, it claims that sinful individuals challenged his representation of God and created a distorted image of God to justify their rebellion. The text discusses how sexual sin is introduced into Satan's plan, emphasizing that any sexual activity outside of God's ordained boundaries is considered sinful. The perspective includes various sexual acts as sinful, such as masturbation, fornication, oral sex, and anal sex, claiming that they all lead down a path towards all sexual orientations that are not solely heterosexual, if not repented. The concept of sodomy is broadened to include both heterosexual and homosexual acts of anal or oral copulation. Engaging in such acts is seen as progression toward homosexuality within this interpretation. It contrasts these acts with God's design for selfless sex within marriage. This perspective claims that fornication is an act of hatred because it alienates individuals from God. It contends that sexual sins are manifestations of selfishness, where individuals prioritize their desires at the expense of others. The interpretation concludes by suggesting that those who continue to worship themselves through sexual sin eventually experience reprobation, resulting in blatant homosexuality, lesbianism, transgenderism, etc. It asserts that God gives people over to these desires as a consequence of their self-centered actions. These desires that you've now fallen into are essentially you choosing to willfully fall into the hands of Satan. The kingdom of God predominantly refuses to preach about the truth concerning sodomy and how God truly feels about this particular sin. The main reason that many Christians do not want to address this issue is that they do not believe God sees this as a sin. Not God, but they themselves have told each other and have made themselves certain in their inner mind that as long as you're married, then these acts are protected, respected, and allowed to be enjoyed. However, this is pure deception and confusion. I must add that it should be no surprise as to why the people of God see no problem with sodomy, given the fact that this is an act they've been enjoying in the many centuries of both Christians and Jews while serving God. In the biblical narrative found in Numbers chapter 25, a significant event involving King Balak and the soothsayer Balaam is recounted. King Balak was deeply troubled and fearful because he had witnessed the defeat of seven tribes, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, Perizzites, Girgashites, Amorites, and Jebusites, along with the conquest of 31 fortified cities and the defeat of King Sion and Og. In his desperate desire to thwart the Israelites, King Balak sought the services of Balaam, a wicked prophet of God and a renowned practitioner of magic and divination. Balak believed that Balaam possessed the power to alter the destiny of nations. As the Israelites crossed the Jordan River and entered into the plains of Moab, Balak instructed Balaam to ascend Mount Pure and perform sacrifices with the intention of cursing the invading nation. However, despite multiple attempts, Balaam found himself unable to invoke a curse upon the Israelites. Instead, he was compelled to follow the divine guidance he received and ended up blessing them, contrary to King Balak's wishes. While Balaam could not curse the Israelites, he still provided strategic advice to King Balak on how to gain advantage over Israel. This account in Numbers chapter 25 highlights the unsuccessful attempts of King Balak to curse the Israelites through the services of the soothsayer Balaam, who ultimately blessed them instead. Despite this, Balaam later advised the king on alternative strategies to contend with the Israelites. King Balak recognized the futility of engaging the Israelites in direct battle. Victory seemed impossible. Instead, he resorted to a different strategy enticing them into submission through the worship of sex. 
Over centuries, Satan has employed various tactics to challenge the body of Christ, including persecution, genocide, torture, and murder. However, despite these trials, the church has consistently rebounded, growing stronger and spreading further. In modern times, Satan has adopted a subtler yet equally destructive approach, using individuals from the adult entertainment industry, including producers, directors, and actors, to advance his unholy agenda. Satan's tactics have evolved, but his ultimate goal remains unchanged. He still uses familiar methods, such as promoting sex worship, to divert the attention of the advancing body of Christ. In Satan's eyes, passive Christians who lack zeal and fight are preferable to dead Christians because they sow despair and hopelessness wherever they go, devoid of joy and fervor. This is the harmful impact that pornography is having on individuals and society at large. While various forms of sexual immorality were associated with paying homage to the deity Baal, the worship of Baal Pure was particularly notorious for its depravity and obscenity. It represented the darkest and most degrading manifestation of idol worship, characterized by unbridled and perverse acts of devotion to Baal Pure, often described as satanic worship. In biblical context, the name Baal, meaning master or lord, was frequently used to reference Satan. Baal's counterpart was the goddess Asherah, a fertility deity known by different names in different cultures, such as Venus, Aphrodite, or Ishtar, but maintaining a similar role. Worship of Baal often involved erecting wooden pillars or images next to Baal's altar and engaging in lascivious sexual practices. Initially, the idol associated with Baal Pure was revered as a symbol of the Tree of Life, but it later became perverted to symbolize the origin of life and was created in a phallic shape representing male procreation organs. The name Pure referred to an obscure local mountain peak in Moab, where gross idolatry prevailed. This name, meaning gap, cleft, or wide opening, carried connotations related to the female genitalia and other bodily cavities, symbolizing the idea of all bodily openings that could be exploited or defiled for sexual purposes in worship. The cult of Baal Pure was notorious for its extreme festivals, during which worshippers would engage in acts of sexual perversion. Before these rituals, participants would often prepare by consuming lentils and beer. Once prepared, they would approach the altar of Baal, typically offering a child as a sacrifice, and engage in disrespectful acts like squatting down to expose their backsides and defecating on the altar. Following these shocking acts, worshippers would retreat into the groves for wild sexual encounters. It's crucial to emphasize that while all forms of sexual immorality were seen as giving homage to the god Baal, the Court of Baal Pure represented the most extreme and unrestrained form of demonic idol worship, where there were no limits or restrictions, and the more grotesque and animalistic the acts, the greater the perceived devotion to the deity. Demon Baal was the demon King Baal, who was reigned king in Satan's kingdom. He is a real entity. That Baal Hadad, which is the storm god many of you recognize as the real Baal, is a false god and is non-existent. He isn't real, nor has he ever been real. Now let me get back to my point. All demonic spirits in the kingdom of hell are either indifferent or are on board with mankind falling into and completely enjoying sexual perversion. However, this shouldn't be news to any of you as servants are a reflection of their master in one way or another. So if Satan sows these desires into the hearts and minds of mankind, then wouldn't his demons do the same? Orgies, drunken orgies, swinging, prostitution, brothels, child sacrifices, multiple reckless abortions, deviant sexual practices, all forms of fetishes, mutilation, voyeurism, pole dancing, cut coding, sexual humiliation, a sexual bondage, all forms of pornography, sexual activity that involves feces and urination are all desires that stem from the kingdom of hell. It shouldn't take much for any of you to understand and see a connection between Baal pure worship and today's hypersexual climate. Even as a Luciferian, one can objectively see and conclude that too many of mankind encourage each other to lose their self-control and indulge in all that they desire. Now, 
You can do as you please because I couldn't care less and you don't answer to me. But I must tell you this information so that none of you may be able to rightfully claim ignorance on that fateful day. One of the main goals of Satan is to debase so many humans that few of mankind is unable to distinguish the differences between a human being and a mere dog. His plan is working. Don't sit up here and act like many of you haven't been severely repulsed by the actions you've all witnessed being committed by another. So now that you know the definition of the word sodomy, you should also know anyone of mankind who commits this act is a sodomite. It doesn't matter what your sexual orientation is. You are still a sodomite by its very definition. Therefore, whether you be a Luciferian Christian atheist or whatever you call yourself, you are indeed committing willful sin in God's eyes and most certainly storing of wrath. Sodomy is idol worship. You do not need to bend down in front of a tree or a golden calf to properly perform idol worship. The word Kadesh has many meanings. This ancient Hebrew word that means temple prostitute, male prostitute, sodomite, and cult prostitute. The feminine counterparts of this word is Kadesha. In the Hebrew Bible, two distinct terms are used to describe whores and prostitutes, Zona and Kadesha. The term Zona simply referred to an ordinary prostitute or promiscuous woman. On the other hand, Kadesha is derived from the Semitic root. Kadesh, meaning holy, consecrated, or set apart in its feminine form. Despite this significant contrast in meaning, these two terms are not interchangeable in the Bible. Zona appears 93 times in the Bible, while Kadesha is only used three times, each with distinct connotations. The existence of these two words has led to the belief that Kadesha might refer to sacred harlots that were associated with fertility temples. However, there is a lack of concrete evidence supporting this claim. It is more likely that Kadesha could have referred to prostitutes who operated near temples where they could extract a larger clientele. The term may have originally denoted consecrated maidens employed in Canaanite and the Phoenician temples, but later became synonymous with the harlotry in the eyes of biblical writers. In any case, the term sacred prostitute continues to be used as it helps explain the dual meaning of Kadesha as both sacred and prostitute. Neither the interpretation of Kadesha as a priestess not prostitute, according to some scholars, nor as a prostitute not priestess, according to others, adequately captures the full semantic range of the Hebrew word in biblical and post-biblical Hebrew. Male prostitutes were referred to as Kadesh or Kadesh, spelled with a K or a Q, literally meaning male who was set apart. Additionally, the Hebrew word Kaliv could also signify a male dancer or prostitute. In some interpretation, the word means dog. The law of Moses, as described in the book of Deuteronomy, was not universally followed in Hebrew culture during the reign of the Davidic line, as recorded in the books of Kings. The kingdom of Judah had lost the book of the law. It was only during the reign of King Josiah that Hilkiah, the high priest of Israel, discovered it in the house of the Lord and realized that the people had disobeyed it, particularly concerning issues related to prostitution. Kadesh, also known as Kadesh, 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 or Kadshu, originally originated as a Semitic deity, and her veneration made its way into Egypt during the New Kingdom period. This was during the Late Bronze Age. She was referred as a goddess associated with aspects of nature, beauty, and sensual pleasures. Originally, her divine consort was Reshep, a Syrian god whose worship found its way into Egypt during the Middle Kingdom. As her worship extended into Egypt, Kadesh became linked with the fertility deity Min, or Mean. Mean and Reshep were often worshipped as a triad along with Kadesh, with her being seen either as the wife of both gods or as the spouse of Reshep and the mother of Mean. In early representations, Kadesh was depicted as a new woman standing on the back of a lion, sometimes a horse in non-Egyptian depictions, crowned with a crescent moon. However, 
After her integration into the Egyptian pantheon, she was more commonly portrayed wearing Hather's headdress or adorned with a pair of cow horns and a sun disc, symbols also associated with Hather and the Eye of Ra. She would often wear a form-fitting sheath dress. In her iconography, Kadesh was frequently shown holding snakes, symbolizing male genitalia or a papyrus plant, which represented Reshep in her right hand, while her left hand held lotus flowers, symbolizing either female genitalia or mean. Notably, she was depicted facing forward, unlike profiles seen in many Egyptian depictions. The etymology of her name is somewhat debated, with some scholars suggesting a connection to the Hebrew word Kadesh, often translated as holy woman and potentially related to the sacred prostitutes in the cult of Asherah known as Kadeshot. Asherah, a Semitic nature goddess, had associations with Hather in Egypt, leading some to view Kadesh as an aspect of Asherah rather than a distinct goddess. Conversely, other scholars proposed that she was a distinct deity and any connection to prostitution might have arisen from early misinterpretations of biblical text. They argue that the word may have related to temple staff without sexual connotations. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4 emphasizes the importance of honoring the marriage bed. Some argue that this verse suggests an unrestricted approach to intimacy within marriage, citing the idea that the marriage bed is undefiled. However, it's crucial to consider the context in which this verse is situated. The passage begins by highlighting the honor due to marriage itself. Furthermore, the text warns against fornication and adultery, stating that these actions defile the marriage bed. In the original Greek text, fornication is referred to as pornea, denoting illicit sexual intercourse. This implies that sexual activities deemed illicit by God are not acceptable even when occurring within the bounds of marriage. Such actions still tarnish the sanctity of the marriage bed, which should be upheld in honor. Therefore, the question arises, do acts of sodomy fall within the category of illicit sexual activities? Yes, indeed it does. The term dishonor used in this context is closely related to the concept of honorable mentioned in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4, which pertains to all forms of sexual misconduct within the heterosexual relationships, including acts like oral and anal intercourse, as well as bestiality. The word dishonor does not have specific Greek or Latin root words. Instead, it is a compound word in English composed of the prefix dis and the noun honor. The prefix dis in Latin means apart or away from in this context. It conveys a sense of negation or reversal. When added to a word, it often implies the opposite or the absence of the base word's meaning. The noun honor in Latin is honor or anos, which signifies respect, dignity, or a sense of moral integrity. It is a positive quality associated with integrity and esteem. When you combine these elements, dishonor essentially means the opposite of honor, indicating a lack of respect, dignity, or integrity. In the context of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4, it underscores the importance of upholding the sanctity and dignity of the marriage bed rather than engaging in behaviors that would bring disrespect or dishonor to it. Idiots of mankind who think cross-dressing and transgenderism are new practices know nothing about history. These practices haven't been new for many centuries. You see, mankind, oral sex in the act itself isn't gender specific. Any human, regardless of their sexual orientation or gender, can perform this act. Its impact extends to the promotion of asexuality and the mindset. The practice itself lacks gender specificity. To normalize homosexuality, Jama K. Highwater's book, The Mythology of Transgression, Homosexuality as Metaphors, suggests that the depiction of Baal Pure as both masculine and feminine signifies a dual gender nature. Highwater further notes, during the worship of Baal Pure, priests assume female attire, while priestesses don male garments. This transgender cross-dressing aligns with the inherently asexual nature of the act. Given that anyone with a mouth can perform it, gender becomes inconsequential. 
it intentionally blurs the line between genders, making participation in this ritual a potential tool for conditioning minds towards the acceptance of all sexual practices outside of heterosexuality, according to this perspective. Just ain't on the men, that's bro, that's bro. Lot of haters, tell me where they at, where they at?